the beautiful thing about this here ride is it's got these wheel blow 9,000 tires. Because you keep going down the road and I guarantee that some of will blow. When you buy a used car, it's a may blow. I guarantee you this one's a will blow. It is luxurious. What do you think? Click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you would like more content, follow social media at Cody Crafted on Instagram. All right, so welcome back to Cody Crafted. As you can see, Cody is crafting a holding device at this moment. Uh, and we are going to be taking this big ass fuel tank out of this big ass bourbon. Uh, so we, this is a 40 gallon tank on this 1989 Suburban. It's also gonna let us clean out some uh, bird's nest, but I definitely prefer bird's nest over rat's nest. Indeed. So, today you're gonna have Cody and Steve-O working on the burbs. The phone ringing. With the phone ringing. There you go. call it a barn find sometimes it really is a barn find always clean up when you're done and if the mess is too much while you're working do a spot clean up when it needs Continue to give this a look over and we'll be back. All right, so we're back working on the fuel tank on the burbs again. Um, and we really thought we were gonna be able to get away with just doing a fuel pump, so we ordered a fuel pump. Uh, in this particular vehicle, the fuel pump and the sending unit are two separate pieces, so you can service either and or both. So after we discarded the old pump, we tested the sender um, while it looks in rough shape, we were still hopeful that it was still serviceable and it was not. So uh, we're not going to be able to just do the pump or the sender. So there comes in the big box and what we have here is an entire fuel pump and sending unit. So we'll be putting this in, easy drag, uh, easy drag and drop installation and uh, we'll just keep going from there. So let's get to it.
All right, we're back working on gears and suspension for the Suburban project. Uh, we did not realize it when we bought it, but the rear end uh, pinion seal had been leaking for apparently quite some time back in uh, 2001. And I think it's why this thing was parked. Uh, if you guys can see the teeth on the ring, completely blown apart. But the pinion, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's bad, okay? That's, that's real bad. So, pinion bearing went to shit. Um, it has weird wear on it. And when you put the thing in gear, the pinion would just shift like this. If your pinion seal is leaking, so at the very least, keep your fluid topped up. Uh, but get that seal replaced, because uh, then it costs you $1,500. Luckily, the carrier itself was okay. Uh, it does have a couple little marks on it from pieces of tooth hitting it, uh, but all in all, it's fine. Um, it's not something we're gonna have to replace at this time. We're not putting a positive traction in it. This isn't a burnout machine, uh, but we are re-gearing from 323s to 373s. Give this thing a little more pep. It's got the original 350 in it, throttle body, pulling like 185 horsepower. So we'll give it some oomph. Nothing like working on dirty old junk, though. Ugh. Amazingly enough, the tie rods and the ball joints and all that seem to be in pretty good shape. Um, we're not going to worry about replacing a bunch of that stuff right now. Just because it's not really necessary. Um, you know, we're not doing a full restoration on this thing. We're more uh, just making it cooler and making it functional. First things first, pull the cotter pins. Uh, we do need brakes. Not horrifically bad, but they're bad enough. I want to go ahead and do them. All right, so since we have all new parts going on here, normally I would just yank the whole knee assembly off, the knuckle, this uh, brake rotor, the, all that stuff, and it would all just go in the trash. Uh, but we need these backing plates in order to mount our new brakes. So this junk has to come apart, even though we're putting all new rotors, all new bearings, all new brakes, all the things. So let's yank this crap off. And this stuff is nasty. So we definitely don't want to be reusing these bearings. The, this side actually sounds good. The other side's kind of grindy, and the bearings are literally like less than 40 bucks, so, you know. Yeah, we got parts. <laughs> These need painting. I'm just gonna put a little more green oil. Make sure that bearing's got a little extra on it. This is a pretty cool tool. I got this from a buddy of mine. This helps keep the pinion pushed in while you're trying to uh, 
uh, it helps keep the pinion pushed in while you're trying to set the bearings and such. So Jared and I ran into a little trouble last night. Uh, for some reason, this thing just really didn't want to set preload. So I pulled it back apart this morning and um, just verified tolerances on everything. And we got it all set. Uh, we've got our preload reset. So we want between 20 and 40 inch pounds. So that's about 25 right there of preload on the bearings. So now we can put the uh, put the diff in, set the side bearings, and away we go. I'm gonna let Jared work on that tonight. I got other stuff to do, but I felt really compelled to get this part done because uh, it really was kind of whipping my butt last night. So, all right, so we're gonna add a little bit more preload. So I gotta use the man's breaker bar here. This is a 36 inch breaker bar. Um, it is three quarter drive. And I'll run these down with an impact, but uh, for setting the actual preload, I, I kind of prefer to do it by hand. Um, racing this on the leash spring. And we've got the yoke holder here. I think this is from um, Barnes, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll just put a little bit on it, see if that gives us enough. So we'll go from the largest breaker bar I have to the smallest breaker bar that I have. This is a quarter inch beam torque wrench. There we go. 25. It should be, and I am not the diff whisperer by any stretch of the imagination, but it should be like, not hard to turn, but like take some effort. It definitely shouldn't be free spinning. Yeah, that's like 22. And you kind of want a steady pull because you don't want the initial friction. And I like to go both ways. Uh, I like to rotate both directions. We're going to wait for Jared. Uh, he's going to finish doing the side lash and all that stuff because I've got to put a U-joint, a carrier bearing, and finish the front end, and there's a bunch of stuff. So we got to get this thing knocked out. This thing's got to go to a show this weekend. Uh, so a little update. I didn't bother filming it, but new brake shoes, new seals for the axles, new wheel cylinders. First set of Bilsteins in the rear, Western chassis for the uh, shock extenders, set of drop shackles. Uh, I do have to get another bolt to go through here, so I have to get that in the morning. Jared just pulled up. We're going to get the rear end knocked out. You can see we got real bolts on this side. The front brakes are on new dust caps because the other ones were all beat up. Um, I got some new banjo bolts so we can bolt up the calipers and bleed the brakes here in a minute. Bolt up the the, uh, the shock here in a second and swap the brake hose over to the new calipers. But the front end's all back together. These are two and a half inch drop spindles. Once again from Western Chassis. Uh, new lower ball joint on this side because it had like a really notchy spot in it. And just felt like turd I didn't like it so new owner you got a new ball joint the other side felt fine this one ugh, nasty Jared nice of you to join us What's up? yeah oh wow it looks really nice it's pretty nice eh yeah these so uh, right now I'm gonna pull the drive shaft out while Jared's finishing up the center section with the new 373s woo -woo. get a little moss horse ponies so I'm going to yank the drive shaft out of it. I'm going to try to put a new carrier bearing in. And this U-joint came apart when we took the uh, pinion out. So, yeah, no bueno. And I'm also going to slap in a new fuel filter. There they are. And a new transmission output seal. It's kind of dark in here, so you guys can't see. But Anyways, uh, every day we're hustling. Time to get to work.
inch holder 9000. So y'all, we are under some real crunch here. Um, no BS, it is currently 12.15. Load in for the C10 Nationals is tonight, and this thing has to be test driven. We ran it, although the rear end was making some god awful noises. We did drive it around the parking lot, or the, drive it around the neighborhood and stuff. And so, I know it runs, we've let it sit here and idle and not get hot, and put a thermostat in it and all that stuff. Um, but, now we have drop spindles on it, and it needs an alignment. And I've been working on this thing till like 11 o'clock every night, all week long, and just kicked in the teeth over one thing or another every time. Every single component has fought me in some way or another. So um, when you're seeing this, you'll know the end result, but <laughs> just uh, pray for me. I need it.